Flight 714 to Sydney French, Volume 714 Poor Sydney, originally published in English as Flight 714 is the 22nd volume of The Adventures of Tintin, the comics series by Belgian cartoonist Herge. The title refers to a flight that Tintin and his friends fail to catch, as they become embroiled in a plot to kidnap an eccentric millionaire from a supersonic business jet on an Indonesian island. This album, first published in 1968, is unusual in the Tintin series for its science fiction and paranormal influences. The central mystery is essentially left unresolved. Topic. Synopsis On a refueling stop in Jakarta on their way to Sydney, Tintin, Captain Haddock and Professor Calculus chance upon their friend Scut introduced in the Red Sea Sharks, now personal pilot for aircraft industrialist and eccentric millionaire Laszlo Caritas. Tintin and his friends join the millionaire on his prototype private jet, the Caritas 160, crewed by Scut, co-pilot Hans Bohm, navigator Paolo Columbani, and steward Gino. En route, Caritas secretary Spalding, Bohm, and Columbani hijack the plane and bring it to the deserted volcanic island of Pulau Pulau Bomba situated in the Salibas Sea, where the aircraft makes a rough landing on a makeshift runway made of interlocking metal strips, with a nylon barrier at the end. While disembarking from the plane, Snowy bolts from Tintin's arms, runs off into the jungle under fire by gunmen, and is apparently killed. The mastermind of the plot then reveals himself as Rastapopoulos, intent on seizing Caritas' fortune. Captain Haddock's corrupt ex-shipmate, Alan, is present as Rastapopoulos' henchman, and Sondonesian nationalists have been hired as mercenaries. Tintin, Haddock, Calculus, Scut and Gino are bound and held in a Japanese World War II-era bunker, while Rastapopoulos takes Caritas to another bunker where his accomplice, Dr. Krollspel, injects the millionaire with a truth serum to reveal Caritas's Swiss bank account number. Under the serum's influence, Caritas becomes eager to confide his life of greed, perfidy, and theft, revealing every detail thereof except the account number. Furious, Rastapopoulos strikes at Krollspel, who is still holding the truth serum syringe, and is accidentally injected, whereupon he too boasts of past crimes until he and Caritas quarrel over which of them is the most evil. In the process, Rastapopoulos reveals that nearly all of the men he recruited, including Spalding, the aircraft pilots, the Sondonesians and Krollspel, are all marked to be eliminated after Rastapopoulos gets Caritas' account number. Snowy, alive after all, helps Tintin and his friends escape, and they find the bunker where Caritas is held prisoner. Tintin and Captain Haddock bind and gag Rastapopoulos, Krollspel and also Caritas who has gone mad being injected by the truth serum, and escort him to lower ground, intending to use Rastapopoulos as a hostage, but the serum's effect wears off, and Rastapopoulos escapes. Krollspel, intimidated by Rastapopoulos, continues to accompany Tintin and Haddock. After a run-in with Alan and some Sondonesians, Tintin, led by a telepathic voice, guides the other protagonists to a cave, where they discover a temple hidden inside the island's volcano, guarded by an ancient statue akin to a modern astronaut. Deeper inside the structure, Tintin and his friends reunite with Calculus and meet Mick Kanrokitov, a writer for the magazine Space Week, whose guiding voice they have followed via a telepathic transmitter obtained from an extraterrestrial race, formerly worshipped on the island as gods and now in cooperation with Kanrokitov to communicate with Earth's scientists. An earthquake and explosion set off by Rastapopoulos and his men triggers a volcanic eruption, but Tintin and his party now reunited with Scut, Calculus and Gino reach relative safety in the volcano's crater. Rastapopoulos and his henchmen flee the eruption outside the volcano and launch a rubber dinghy from Karida's plane. Kanrokitov puts Tintin and his friends under hypnosis and summons a flying saucer piloted by the extraterrestrials, in which all escape the eruption. Kanrokitov spots the rubber dinghy and exchanges Tintin and his companions except Krollspel, who is taken to Cairo. New Delhi in the French edition. Under hypnotic-induced amnesia for Alan, Spalding, Rastapopoulos, and the treacherous pilots, who are whisked away in the saucer to an unknown fate. Tintin, Haddock, Calculus and Scud awaken from hypnosis and cannot remember what happened to them, but Calculus retains a crafted rod of alloyed cobalt, iron, and nickel, which he had found in the caves. The cobalt is of a state that does not occur on Earth, and is the only evidence of a close encounter with its makers. Only Snowy, who cannot speak, remembers the hijacking and alien abduction. The story ends with Tintin, Caritas, and companions catching Qantas Flight 714 to Sydney. History Herge commented that with Flight 714 to Sydney, he wanted a Return to adventure with a capital A. without really returning there. He sought to provide answers to two questions Are there other inhabited planets? And are there insiders who know it? 
Hirsch had a long-standing interest in paranormal phenomena, and believed that a story with such elements would appeal to the growing interest in the subject. He was particularly influenced by Robert Charix's Le Livre des Secrets Trahis, The Book of Betrayed Secrets, which expounded the idea that extraterrestrials had influenced humanity during prehistory. The character of Mick Kanrokitov was based on Jacques Bergier. A launch party for the publication of the book was held in Paris in May 1968, but was overshadowed by that month's student demonstrations and civil unrest. Later, Herge regretted explicitly depicting the alien spacecraft at the end of the story, although was unsure how he could have ended the story without it. Topic. Caritas 160 Herge wanted the Caritas 160 in Flight 714 to Sydney 1968 to have at least the same detailed attention that he had put into all of his fictional vehicles, from the Unicorn ship in The Secret of the Unicorn 1943 to the Moon rocket in Explorers on the Moon 1954. The supersonic jet aircraft called for by the new Tintin adventure, while fanciful, could not be viewed as implausible and needed to meet the same exacting standards. Herge, who had reached his 60th birthday and whose drawing hand had begun suffering from eczema, was happy to leave the drawing of the jet to Roger Leloup, his younger colleague at Studios Herge. Leloup, a technical artist and aviation expert, had drawn the moon rocket, the de Havilland Mosquito in the Red Sea Sharks 1958, and all aircraft in the recently redrawn The Black Island 1966. The loop was described by British Tintin expert Michael Farr as the aeronautical expert in the studios, and his design of the Caritas 160 as painstakingly executed and, of course, viable. A meticulous design of the revolutionary Caritas 160 jet was prepared, according to entertainment producer and author Harry Thompson, a fully working aircraft with technical plans drawn up by Roger Leloup. The loop's detailed cross-sectional design of the Caritas 160 and its technical specifications were published in a double-page spread for Tintin magazine in 1966. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Critical analysis. Herge biographer Benoit Peters noted that the book smacks somewhat of Herge's hesitation as he was unsure whether to include an explicit depiction of the extraterrestrial ship, the literary critic Tom McCarthy believed that Flight 714 to Sydney exhibited a number of themes that recurred throughout the adventures of Tintin more widely. He opined that the troubles faced by Tintin and Haddock aboard Carrider's jet reflected the theme of the troubled host-guest relationship. He believed that Rastapopoulos' activities below the area that he could be located by radar reflected the theme of eluding detection. In addition, he expressed the view that the flagging relationship of Haddock and Calculus, as it is depicted in Flight 714 to Sydney, is a form of the wider theme of strained relationships in the series. McCarthy also highlighted the scene at the start of the story in which Haddock mistakes Caritas for someone trapped in poverty and gives him some money accordingly. McCarthy drew parallels between this scene and a similar one from Charles Baudelaire's poem, La Force Monet, suggesting that Herge might have been thinking of Baudelaire's scene when creating his own. In his psychoanalytical study of the adventures of Tintin, the literary critic Jean-Marie Apostolides expressed the view that the concept of the void appeared repeatedly in Flight 714 to Sydney, referring to the existence of World War II bunkers and the underground temple as reflections of that void. He added that whereas early adventures of Tintin reflected a keen division between good and evil, in this story this dichotomy has been replaced by a meaningless void, with Rastapopoulos having degenerated from the role of criminal mastermind to that of a mere hoodlum, who sinks to the level of mere farce. Apostolides further expresses the view that one of the best scenes in the story was that involving an interchange between Rastapopoulos and Caritas, stating that their opposition is merely superficial, in this way comparing them to the competing figures of General Alcazar and General Tapioca in Tintin and the Picross. Apostolides believed that Flight 714 to Sydney exhibited many of the same themes as were present in Prisoners of the Sun and the Destination Moon, Explorers on the Moon story arc. He compares the character of Caritas with that of Baxter from the Moon Adventure, yet notes that the former is craftier, more childish and inhumane, less interested in research itself than in technological applications. Working for profit rather than the good of humanity. Turning his attention to comparisons with Prisoners of the Sun, he highlights that both stories feature ancient temples, weird animals, and dramatic natural phenomena, as well as the prominent inclusion of amnesia. 